This podcast is part of the Michigan Sports and Entertainment Podcast Network. Go to michigansportsandentertainment.com for more great podcasts. Hey everyone, this is Austin. What's going on guys, this is John. And you're listening to Voice of the Fan Sports Podcast. All right, John, we are back. Huh. <laughs> Rough. <laughs> Rough. I don't know if that's even the best word to describe what happened to Purdue against Minnesota, but oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> don't even know what to say. You're right there, buddy. Gosh, literally just the worst possible thing happened ever, ever. For her, for those that don't know, I don't know how you wouldn't know. Uh, Purdue lost starting quarterback Elijah Sindelar and our star wide receiver Rondell Moore in the same play. Um, it was a rollout. Uh, Moore looked like he just kind of got was getting pushed off coverage, and his his knee looked like it got pretty hyperextended. Took a weird step, went down. It looked like Sindelar was going to look for him, and because he fell down, he hesitated. And then he gets pile drived into the ground and he doesn't get up. And then the thing that they didn't really show was Rondell Moore, try- Rondell Moore trying to get up and walk and collapsing because he couldn't put any weight on that knee. So just oof. Just I, horrible, horrible, horrible to see those two go down. Um, it looks like, you know, today's or tonight is Wednesday. Um, from reports have already come out. It looks like Sindelar's probably done for the year. He is going to be long term. He had surgery on what, his collarbone that he broke. Is, did he already have a redshirt year? Yeah, but he's got a second year already. So he applied for a second year oh, because so he already of applied knee tendonitis. For, so he already applied for it. Ugh. Yeah. So I mean, I I don't know if you can get a third year, but I I've, he probably wouldn't want to. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think I've ever seen that. I know Michigan State's punter got a sixth year, but I don't I don't think I've ever heard of a seventh year. That's a bummer. Talented kid yeah, too. I mean, obviously, I you, you never know, but I, I feel like a lot of these guys have NFL aspirations. He's got the prototypical style. I mean, big arm, uh, height, but these injuries are just killer for yeah. him. And I was thinking to myself, this is what's going to hold him back. Um, obviously, he was off to a jumping year, like nine touchdowns, two interceptions, led the country in yardage, and then concussion on like the last play of the game against Vanderbilt, comes back against Minnesota, and breaks his collarbone. So, so uh, that's tough to see. I guess the somewhat optimistic news is Rondo Moore's not out for the year. Yeah. And if no. you told me – I mean, I, I looking ask you at weird, that injury, it looked bad. I wanna, but, well, actually, no, that one, never mind, never mind. I'm not even going to say that. Wouldn't make what? Sense. I was going to say, but Ronald Moore is gone after his third year anyways. I was going to say, like, do you want if, – if this year is lost, you kind of want him to maybe redshirt this year and come back, but he's gone regardless after his third year that he's gone. Once he's eligible, if he continues at his pace, he's gone anyway. So. Yeah, I would think he's – like, he's, 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 he's Tracking to be a first round draft pick. Yeah. So yeah. It it would make sense in my head if he wasn't like a first round talent. <laughs> right. But um he's week to week. Uh he won't play against Penn State, but they're not ruling him out uh I think for Maryland, which is October not tenth, maybe the week after that. Uh, I don't know. Sixteenth probably. The sixteenth. No, I'm think. sorry. Right, so, what the what am I talking about? We're both out of it. <laughs> The 16th okay. will be a Wednesday. Uh, so whatever day, the next day they play after that, that's the day we're going to go with. Right. So a super ambiguous answer. Uh, and you know what? Cool. We'll go with that. Um, but it, which is encouraging, obviously, because it's it. you want him back. I want him back at 100%. I don't want him to come back too early and ruin his, his future um, playing for not necessarily for a team that's a lost cause, but this year is probably the lost cause. And, And I was talking to some other Purdue fans and I was telling them this might be the year that we all expected to happen year one with Jeff Brom, but we turned in a 500 year and, uh, you know, went one loss under 500 playing. We went against Auburn who lost maybe not that many people and they're uh, top 10 in the nation. So that's who we played last year in a bowl game, but obviously sitting at one and three, 
we're going on the road to Penn State. Um, you have your two best defensive players out, your two best offensive players out. You're starting a bunch of freshmen. I mean, just tough. Um, but before we do that, we'll, we'll dive into to Minnesota. Um, I guess we'll talk about the bad first, and then they're, I guess they're – you know, glass half full kind of guy. I am. There is some some optimism here, but um. So to, I'm just looking at the stat. Tanner Morgan, the quarterback for Minnesota, 21 of 22, 396 yards, four touchdowns. RPOs did not treat you guys well. <laughs> no, it seemed like um, every time I turned off the Michigan State game and put the Purdue game on, if Minnesota had the ball, it was like an RPO, just like tearing you guys up. And it's like the simple RPO concept of just the run slant, you know, nothing too crazy. And we got toasted for three touchdowns on that. I mean, I I don't know. Obviously the linebacker, you're missing your best linebacker that maybe has a little bit of an impact there. Uh, The corners, what do you, I, I don't know. I just have no answers for why that happened. There was no adjustments made until, I mean, I think after halftime, and then they ran the RPO streaks, and it's, it's I don't know if they scored or not. I, I mean, I mean, basically led them down the field uh, to a score. But Minnesota's offense was humming. I mean, Rodney Smith came back uh, from his injury, twenty-two carries for one hundred fifteen yards. You know, average uh, five and five point two yards a carry. The receivers. I mean, you're, I'm looking at these averages. Rashad Bateman did the most damage. Six catches, 177 yards, almost a 30-yard average, two touchdowns. Chris Autumn Bell, three catches, 97 yards, over 30-yard average, and a touchdown. You know, Tyler Johnson, their stud, eight catches, 73 yards, 9.1, so he's the lowest. And then you have Jake Paulson, tight end, and Rodney Smith, the running back, with over 20 yards a catch. I mean, talk about getting absolutely gashed on defense and the secondary was supposed to be the unit that had some experience, had some guys that you were excited about as a Purdue fan. And going into Penn State, the corner start the starting corners are different. Um, so, I mean, Diedrich Mackey and Kenneth Ma- Kenneth Major didn't play. I don't know if he was hurt. I was actually really um, happy with Kenneth Major's play. I don't know if he's been hurt. I know he was hurt going into the TCU game. Diedrich Mackey, I wasn't exactly thrilled about he's the one that gave up the the short yard completion the short uh field long completion nevada on an out route which i mean you just got to blanket that thing to a freshman quarterback um he just plays soft not necessarily in his tackling because he's a good tackler but i don't know if he trusts his speed because he just plays off the ball a lot and is not aggressive attacking and i mean it kind of costs purdue a lot so I think Corey Trice and Jordan Bonner are the two guys getting the nod against Penn State. Uh, so this is supposed to be a team that was the secondary was supposed to be your strength, and obviously it's not. You and I'm, like we said, Lorenzo Neal is supposed to come back. Penn State, he's not coming back. Uh, Marcus Bailey obviously gone for the year. So just really, really tough. I mean, defensively, just I don't know. George Karloftis, though, I will say stud. Um, absolute stud. He's doing his thing. Um, and I really think that's that's like the bright spot. I think Jalen Graham's doing okay. Um, excited to see Corey Trice play corner. He transitioned from safety to corner. Uh looks like a big dude. So we'll we'll kind of see how that goes. Um, but yeah, not a lot of good happening on the defensive side of the ball. Offensively, uh, we gotta see a lot of freshmen play. Um, so I, I you know. At, at what cost? You know, we'll see if uh, if Connor can even can put a the Thanos um, <laughs> line in there where it said he says it cost him everything. What did it cost? Everything. You know, at what cost did we get to see all these young guys? Literally everything. We everything to see these guys play. Um, but I think Jack Plummer continues to look confident and comfortable running the show. I think the offense is going to start opening up for him a little more. Um, he's got a really pretty throw, really nice ball. I wish you'd put some more zip on some balls, give his guys a little bit better of a chance, but uh, you know, the dude balled out. Um, he did get picked off twice. Um, if I, if memory serves me well, one of them, he just 
stared at Anthrop the whole time and the linebacker picked it off. The other one, I think, um, was not, you know, wasn't a terrible throw uh, to my understanding. Like I said, if I remember correctly, but so he did all right. Um, obviously, Rondell Moore was out, but we saw the coming out party of David Bell. Eight catches for 114 yards, which was awesome. Um, I think he's going to be kind of the next guy that Purdue really relies on. Good size, really fluid route runner. And uh, it doesn't look like he's like he's he's fast, but I mean, he just glides by people. He, he, he runs he's really so smooth routes, too, and has sure hands. And like you said, he's not like super fast, like speed wise, like, you know, when you think like sprinting, sprinter speed, but he's he moves pretty quick. Like he's uh, I think fluid would like fluidity would be the right word to describe how he moves. Like he's just really smooth with it, it seems like. Yes, I, I agree. Um, and then really the, the highlight of the offense of true freshman King Doru, 20 carries, 94 yards, two touchdowns, and then added a touchdown on a screen pass. Um, he ran hard. He looked elusive, uh, ran with a lot of power. I mean, really, really good job. Jeff Brom, obviously, I think he said afterward that they were game planning for some better running. Um, and now, especially with Jack Plummer having to take over the, uh, the reins here, the run game is going to be kind of an essential piece. And I think King Duro, uh, Doru, excuse me, brings that added element. Uh, and Purdue had over hundred yards rushing finally. So uh, like we said last week, the second worst rushing offense in all of the country in front of Toledo. <laughs> so wow. Yeah. Um, it was really bad. Uh, we had a pretty good game against Minnesota as far as rushing goes. And I mean, I, it looked like the game was about to get out of hand. Um, it was 31 to 17 going into the fourth. And I mean, Purdue's defense couldn't really stop Minnesota, but got some semblance of some stops and Purdue scored and then got an onside kick and scored again, um, which was huge. But and then the defense can stop Minnesota. But um, I mean, it made the game interesting, made the game respectable. The dudes, you know, everyone played really, really hard. But you know, like I alluded to earlier, we got to see all these freshmen play. It was awesome seeing it, but what did it cost? Everything. Yeah. Um, and then obviously that saw Purdue fall to one and three. So you're really wishing that you would have had that uh, Nevada win because then you would be sitting at two and two going to Penn State who lit up Maryland uh, Friday night. That is an understatement. <laughs> John, I mean, John told me that Maryland canceled classes, got everybody to go to the game and they got shut out and Maryland just really dropped off a cliff. They were scoring points at a crazy rate. Home game ranked team, you thought upset all over it. Uh, wrong. Penn State just blew them out. And that's what we get to go to on the road. And this is going to be the first true road test for probably over half of this team um, because a lot of this team are freshmen or people who haven't played. Um, you know, obviously Michigan State, uh, I think, it was, what was it, last year? Uh, I was on the road. Ohio State came to us. Um, Wisconsin came to us. So we've got a lot of tough road games this year. Penn going on the road to Penn State. At one time, I was optimistic and saying we could have yeah, some I, special I, things come together. I Lorenzo picture. Neal's back, Marcus Bailey, Rondell Moore, Elijah Sindelar. I mean, okay, let's go. Yeah, I picked you guys to win yeah. this game preseason. And, uh, whoo, um, whoo. Well, I can't blame you because you didn't know that Purdue was going to be missing four of its best players, yeah, yeah. or not four of four of the best. I feel players. like I should get a pass on my my hot take that Purdue would be in the Big Ten championship due to injuries. Is that a thing? Uh, probably not. But all right, fair enough. Now it is, but after we lost to Nevada, I mean, yeah, fair enough. You picked us. Oh to yeah, I did. I do. Yeah, I picked that. That was. I so I guess that's true. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, not. Not pretty, and I mean, I really do not have much to say about this upcoming game. And that you know, I am the Purdue optimist, I feel like. Well, but the thing that you can do defensively as Purdue is 
you just really hone in on KJ Hamler. I feel like I'm not. I haven't. I don't love what I've seen from. I think their quarterback's name is Clifford so far. They don't really have big play capability unless they're throwing like a crossing route to KJ Hamler and he goes like 80 yards. So I, there's things that you can do there, but it's just it can produce defense do that. I. No. Well, there you go. Okay, well, <laughs> maybe, that's, maybe that's what the spread is, 27 and a half. <laughs> um, it's just, I don't know. I We need to see something with with this Purdue team. But I think if you're a Purdue fan, you kind of just want to see your guys fight and show grit and compete in the game for a while. I mean, no one's expecting you to go to Happy Valley and pull out a W right now. Yeah, and um, that, I mean, I agree with you. You want to see the freshman. I want to see how Jack Plummer right. handles – the road test. I want to see how the offensive line, who a lot of these guys are going to be there next year a, and are going to need to take that step up. How are as, they going to do against Penn State? As much as it um, sucks, like living in the future, like, I mean, because in sports, we all want to live in the now. We all want our teams to be, you know, good right now. Like, give me championships now. But Purdue's building for the future right now. They, you guys get a lot of young guys coming in now. Like you said, Plummer, I mean, he's going to be your guy. I mean, unless uh, Alamo somehow comes in and beats him out. But Plummer, was looked, he looks all right. He looks solid against Minnesota. Looked like a young QB, but showed some talent, especially when he became confident. I remember texting you during the game. He made a couple of confident throws when I was watching. So he's got the tools. You just want to look to see him continue to get better. King Doru, uh, another positive you know, potential guy there at running back. You said oh, young O-line. Just some pieces to look, watch out for. I mean, it's tough to really enjoy a one-in-three start, but the rest of the year you kind of just want to see the development of these players. Yeah, and I mean, really, that there's not going to be any keys to win the game because I honestly do not <laughs> think we have a chance. But, yeah, to your point, really it's just going to be what does this team look like against a ranked, a highly ranked team on the road uh, you know, it, it's not the same team as that beat Ohio State. Um, no. <laughs> so it, it, it's how how are we looking? What What's our response to adversity? Obviously losing all of these good players that we have. But uh, yeah, Jack Plummer, obviously it's going to be tough on him. What's the line going to do? What's the running game going to look like? Uh, Penn State's front seven is pretty good. Um, the receivers, how are they going to do? Are, is Penn State just going to press the whole time and just make life hell? Uh, is anyone going to get away? Um, and then the defense, I mean, I'm looking at – I'm just going to watch Karloftis as he continues to develop. You know, Minnesota's line was huge, but he got a one-and-a-half sacks. Uh, Penn State's line is not as big, but probably more refined in my opinion. So uh, his continued development, how does he continue to look? Because obviously he's going to be great for this year and, and the next two years uh, because he's probably going to go in the draft as well. But – um, you know, definitely want to see, see that. I want to see how this, what, what the secondary looks like and how they play, uh, as well. Obviously swapped out the corners, um, you know, the safety. I thought, you know, I thought Navon Mosley had a bad game. I thought he looked soft. He looked tentative, uh, ten, you know, just did not look like the, the experienced safety that you needed. Um, and, I mean, so how does that respond? Jalen Graham, you know, Simeon Smiley got called for a really tough pass interference call that, kept a, a Minnesota drive alive while Purdue was trying to fight back. Excuse me. But uh, yeah, it's really just going to, I think this year it's chalked up to how does the development look? Do we continue to take steps forward despite losing or are we just kind of, you know, circling the wagon a la the Daryl Hazel years where it just doesn't look like anything's really happening. Um, Did you like Daryl Hazel when he first came in? You know, obviously we, I, because he did, I think, what was it, at Akron? No, Toledo, Toledo. Um, You know, he, he Toledo was a top 25 team when he was the coach there. So right. it's like, it made sense that he was a hire. But then as things started to fall apart, I found out that he didn't even, like, recruit <laughs> the guys that made that Toledo team good. They were already there. Yeah. Um, And then hearing his recruiting process was just awful. There were some kids that were really close that were probably locked to Purdue if he offered and he didn't. Nice. Um, and, and they left. It was just, it was just a disaster. Um, and I mean, like when he got fired midseason, and we had the interim wide receiver coach, coach, you, the team played harder. They weren't better, but they played harder. And I think obviously Jeff Brom came in. He added maybe one or two grad transfers, and the team. 
I mean, he obviously went 500, won a bowl game. I mean, it was it was phenomenal what he did with that team. So, you know, I it, it's going to be very similar to the Hazel years, but the caveat, really good coaching. Um, I just don't know. I mean, Nick Holt's got a good pedigree, obviously USC defensive coordinator, but I mean, the defense continues to get gashed. The secondary is not aggressive. You know, is that the DB, the new DBs coach? Is that the new, you know, is that whole, I don't know, but I think something on defense has got to change. I mean, take chances. If you get beat taking chances at this point, so be it, but don't give up points and yardage being scared is all I'm saying. Uh, so I would like to see the defense be aggressive, the secondary to be aggressive. Um, so really that that's it. That that's Penn's the Penn State game. I mean, there's not a whole lot more to 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 talk about with that. But uh um, you know, recruiting, obviously there there was a, a pretty good sized weekend uh that was at the Minnesota game. Um, you know, Purdue continues to do well on recruiting trails, so really it's just a matter of time, really, for Purdue. I think Jeff Brom really needs to start getting the big fish offensive linemen because Clearly, that is the issue, and defensive line, which I think he's doing already. But uh, you know, no real news in the recruiting. Yeah, obviously, Purdue basketball is about to start up. Um, but uh, outside of that, John will do around the horn. Week five. Uh, real quick, before we get into that, man, you know it's yeah. you know it's been a rough year when Austin's done talking about his Boilermakers. Twenty. Yeah, literally like twenty minutes. <laughs> he's like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I mean, they, I, what is I, just I know. literally I know. not – I just – there's just nothing. It's, it's going to be really like my breakdown nothing. against the Ohio State game. It's going to be I hope your defense shows up and pray that we can score some points. Other than that, you're probably getting smoked. <laughs> yeah, I, it's just – there's really not much to say. Yeah, obviously, I think Penn State wins the game against Purdue. Look out for the young guys, see how they do. Um, you know, hope they make it close-ish. You know, not the 27 and a half that, uh, you know – Penn State's favored by, but we'll see. You know who knows. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh gosh, it's, it's, it's rough. Yeah, but uh, anyway, around the horn. Here we go. Um, so just something interesting before we get into the Big Ten play. Uh, Duke is their only loss this season came to Alabama. Yeah, they're three and one. That's really interesting. You pointed that out. Actually, who they play so far? <laughs> Uh, no one, oh, but they look really good. Yeah, I mean, so, they, they hung with Alabama for a decent bit. Like they were, they looked like they could play with them for a while, and then yeah, Alabama kind of figured out their is, offense. But yeah, Duke's yeah, the defense forty-two held to up. three score is not. Yeah, I mean, it it's, it's you know, it's it's Bama, and it wasn't good. But I think for the first, pretty much first half. I mean, what the first half was a fourteen nothing or something. Uh, it. I mean. I think it was like seven three or something. Like yeah, Duke they, was on the board. It you know. Why don't we think about Bama what Bama does in the second half? Because I've experienced that when we play them in the playoffs. So <laughs> moving on. Yeah. <laughs> um. So Big Ten action that Friday night game. Penn State fifty nine, Maryland zero. Whew. So we, we we already kind of alluded to that. Uh. Then the surprise Arizona State beating Cal at home when Cal was ranked. Yeah. Um, Arizona State but, might be good. They might be good, so John, that loss might not look bad. You we, honestly, you're an Arizona State fan as a Michigan State fan. The, yeah, we'll get into that more. I, there's some question marks I have about our team more than I really wanted to have at this point in the season, but yeah, uh, it still doesn't make the 10 7 loss at home make me feel any better. Yeah, uh, then I, I mean, Iowa sleeper in the mm-hmm. West, man. Yep, yep. 48 to 3. No took one's care of talking business. them. They look them. sharp. Yeah, they look sharp. They're creeping up the rankings. Um, Wisconsin pretty readily beat Northwestern. Northwestern's offense is just garbage, yeah, but uh, they made a game of it. 24-15, that final score. Um, so, but Wisconsin continues to roll. Honestly, 15 points. That's got to be like the most someone's put on Wisconsin this year, right? It is by one point. Michigan put 14 on them. There you go. Go Cats. Go Cats, um, baby. <laughs> I'll try and uh, Michigan blew out Rutgers in their bounce back game, which is expected. That was not really uh, varsity to versus about freshman there. team. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, not to mention Rutgers fired their coach after that game. <laughs> well, poor guy. What are you going to do with that? I, um, who takes a job at Rutgers? Honestly, what are you in charge? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, then obviously we'll talk about Michigan State, Indiana. It was a last second, you know, mm-hmm. field goal and then a fumble. 
uh, into the end zone for, yeah. for Indiana to lose that. Honestly, I we'll talk about it tomorrow, but all I'll say is talking about it, it was the- Indiana. You're expected to win that game at home. I mean, Indiana's like sneaky good most of the time. You got to like crush them early. Otherwise they hang around. And I don't think Michigan State did that well enough. Briefly, yeah, I'll let them hang around. Like you said, it was just everybody knows Michigan State. If you can get them to play sideline to sideline, because for whatever reason, we don't like to adjust until it's too late to where we're playing 10 yards off wide receivers. So Michael Penix Jr., who to his credit, I think is going to be really good. Tore us up by just hiking the ball, looking to his left or looking to his right, having a wide receiver there on, on the flat on a screen and just throwing it to him and getting extra yardage. And they did that to us all the way down the field. The third quarter, I think we had the ball for 47 seconds. So what do you want to do when you beat a team when you can't stop their offense, which was surprisingly good for Michigan State? You keep them off the field. Bright's uh, positives, Michigan State's offense won us a game. I can't remember a lot of yeah, that. Yeah, I was going to say, that was, that was big. The Lewerke's 18 for 36 is kind of misleading. He had to throw a lot of balls in the dirt due to pass rush, and he, a lot, like I think we had eight or nine drop passes. So, But he he had 75 rushing yards, so he's starting to get comfortable running the ball again. So some positives, negatives, that defense. Whew. Um, hopefully just an off day because they're playing uh, – by far the most talented team in the Big Ten on Saturday. So we'll see how they prepare for them. And arguably one of the most talented teams I in the country. I personally in Ohio State. think, even though they have not played anybody, I think right now they're the best team in the country. I think Justin yeah. Fields is special. And they have yeah. a guy named Chase Young on the other end of the ball. And I don't know, yeah. Jeffrey Okuda. And I don't know, just all these other guys that Ohio State has. Their corners are all uh, NFL prospects. So yeah, that, that you know. Whew. I, I, is, I don't, is Ohio State the new DBU? I, mean, I, I don't know. I don't, and really, where do you see a weakness on this Ohio State team? O line, yeah. maybe, but they even there, they're solid. They're not bad. I mean, you just have to be good enough for right Justin Fields exactly. because he, he the difference between him and Haskins is obviously he 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 is more of a threat to run than Haskins was. Yep. So, um, but. Uh, you know, the last Big Ten game that had really any sort of relevance, Ohio State went into freaking Lincoln and crushed <laughs> Nebraska, which was very expected. Stupid for game day to go you there. Picked Nebra- you picked so Nebraska high. to cover, bro. Well, <laughs> I didn't think they were going to win. I thought they would be I close, know. I, but... I mean, to give to Austin's credit, the spread was 17 and a half. So. <laughs> Generally, you're not getting blown I, I out like, that okay, bad. Nebraska's defense, maybe they'll do something. It's supposed to be jamming and rocking and Lincoln, and then nope. it was ugly. It was ugly. Um, then the just the last thing, really. Uh, I don't know if you count any of the Clemson North Carolina game, but yeah, yeah. Boy, Clemson does not look. I great. was thinking like, okay, you know, it's a couple weeks in the season, all this hype. I mean, whew. I mean, it's now we're what week. Uh, six college football. Do they play? I don't think they play this week, but uh, much needed buyer for them. They got to figure some things out, man. That offense does not look that good. Yeah, Lawrence is throwing is, a lot of interceptions. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it was a road game, but I mean, North Carolina really could have sent the game to overtime. I, if I'm at, I, I, you know, I get going for two. Why the hell not? But the way your team was playing, really holding out against Clemson, why not go to overtime and just, you're at home, put them on the ropes. The pressure's all on them, you know, going for two, I get it, but go to overtime and see what happens, man. You know, that, that's my thing. They went for two, uh, I, the strangest option, you know, read option uh, play call to, to go for the win. got stuffed is stupid, but anyway, it's something interesting to watch uh, as far as Clemson is concerned. But, um, you know, really moving on quickly into week six, there's some of the ranked games. Uh, Iowa at Michigan, Big Ten, that's at noon. That, that'll be a good one. Um, Auburn at Florida, so seven Auburn at ten Florida, which will be also interesting. Um, I think Texas, West Virginia has got a chance to be pretty good. Yeah, it's got potential. Um. Let's see here. Uh, Cal and Oregon. 
is a night game on Saturday. And then obviously Michigan State, Ohio State is the rink battle at night, Mm -hmm. which, (laughs) uh, you know, we'll kind of see how that goes. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know. It's going to be as bad. I think Michigan State will show up, but how much they can do, I I don't know. It's not even that I think Michigan State's a bad football team. I just think the talent gap between Ohio State and everybody else in the Big Ten, maybe besides Wisconsin, I. It's, it's that much, it's that big. Like, I don't yeah. think anybody can really stay in a game with Ohio State if, unless you can score back and forth with them. There's no way. Right. I, I mean, who knows? It, it's there. It's crazy. It is crazy. So, John, that, that's all I got, man. When Purdue stinks <laughs> and not necessarily stinks, but when they're not, you, they can't play to the level you want them to because everybody's hurt. Yeah, you know, it makes for really short well, episodes. And it's, you know, recruiting season's quiet. Uh, basketball season hasn't started yet, other than practice. I mean, it's kind of a quiet time around when your football team is not performing. So I'm really gonna be like you were last year and just you know, big basketball podcast guy. Yeah, um, that starts up. It's uh, it's interesting. Uh, you really just briefly talk about how well for me it was briefly talked about how bad the offense was, and then you just jumped right into uh, basketball. That's pretty fun. Yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, pretty basketball continues their pretty, trend in the correct direction. Pretty confident Michigan State will look all right on the basketball court this year. A little confident. Yep. I'm pretty sure they're project. They're they're like the number they're, one yeah, team in the country, be, aren't they? The one, they'll be the preseason yeah. number one team. Yeah, yeah. So they'll they be, they'll, open up pretty good. Open up against Kentucky at the at Madison Square Garden. Wow. Well, that should be fun. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, well, yeah, it was just a rough weekend for football, man. Uh, Purdue lost. Cowboys lost. Dude, lost my flag football game. Oh man. I, and I, I How'd went. You doing, uh, How'd you do in Madden? Um. Honestly, I can't remember. I think I did okay. Well, there you but go. Fantasy football, all right? I only got one win. Well, Jesus, uh, Austin, football. you did not have a fun time. Um, <laughs> no, I got I got smacked around. If this it makes weekend, you feel any better, the Lions lost as well. Although I was pretty hey, that was I was pretty happy with how they played. That was a better game. If you carry on Johnson and fumble on the one yard oh. line, <laughs> we're talking about an undefeated Lions team right now. Oh my god, wouldn't that be crazy? They beat the Chiefs and they tied with the Cardinals. But yeah, regardless, yeah. we're not an NFL podcast. We're not going to get too much into it. As a Lions fan, I'm optimistic and very excited. Yeah. Hey, Lions are um, a good football team? Question mark. Yeah. Back? Question mark. I don't, I don't know, know if we've ever been, been there, but yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll have to continue to see. Hopefully Maybe we will not. be a Lions podcast. Hopefully, Hawkins. I don't know. Hey, that's all I got to say. <laughs> that TJ Hawkins uh, injury gave me an aneurysm almost. Oh, yeah, concussion, right? Well, yeah, I thought he broke his neck with the way it first looked because he was not moving, and he literally bent his neck. So I was like, oh, boy. Ooh, yikes. Well, hopefully he's okay. But yeah, well, concu- well, let's just it's go. concussion. Oh. It's just a concussion. So, I mean, not just a concussion. Jesus, I sound a little insensitive yeah, there. Be, but... be sent- yeah, dude, jeez. I know. I'd much rather him have a concussion than a broken neck, okay? I'm sorry. That That is – honestly, that's fair. <laughs> that's that's okay. That's fair. Um. Other than that, other than our medical opinions, any uh, final thoughts? No. Um, I, honestly, just as Purdue fans, just keep uh, – just as uh, – well, I don't want to use a P.J. Fleck reference. Um, just stay out of that boat, get in your own boat, and just enjoy watching these freshmen develop. You got Carl Loftus. You guys got some talented young kids coming in, another good recruiting class coming in, so – a lot to look forward to in the future. One and three, rough start. Um, season's not over, but I mean, you guys kind of wanted to see a nine and three type of year. I feel like, for sure. But uh, I don't you know if they're going to win out. So, you probably not. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like John said, we'll we'll look, watch the young. You guys going bowling? Talent. Oh boy. Um, let's see. We got road games against Penn State, Wisconsin, and Iowa. We got Maryland at home. Mm-hmm. I think we get Nebraska at home on the road at Illinois, who has looked pretty good. I don't know. It looks not great. <laughs> I will I will tell you right now it does not look good. But we'll we'll see. That's why they play the games. If it makes you feel any better, Michigan State's looking at being like uh God, what are they right now? Four and one. Could be easily four and four after uh <laughs> the next three weeks. We got Ohio right. State, Wisconsin, Penn State back to back to back. One game at home. It'll be a, it'll be a test, certainly, but uh, you know, 
At least you guys have your best players. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, I experienced that last year, so I know how you feel, friend. You did. Yes, you did. So the the playing field's been even. But before we babble on... Yeah, we could continue talking on it forever, but we're not going to allow that. <laughs> <laughs> As always, I'm Austin, co-host John Emmons. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you guys next time. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. If you like what you heard tonight, subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Voice of the Fan, and also give us a listen on SoundCloud. And if you could, like our page on Facebook at Voice of the Fan and follow us on Twitter at Voice of the Fan PC. Thanks, everyone.